Hello and welcome back to the third rail. Today's video will be about this pile of locomotives in front of me. They are all Merklin BR120s based on the same tooling. This one here is a 3553 I just acquired. It's one of those fitted with a 5 star propulsion system. These two I've had for a long time and I do not know what state they're in. We have a 3153 and a digital 3653 and this one this one here you have seen before here and there I think it was a rescue dog I had to mend back to life it's got plenty of cosmetic defects and is missing all sorts of things in its box like the paperwork for example anyway Today is going to be all about getting them technically ready for a future video, so if servicing is your poison of choice, you have landed in the right place today. I'm going to start with these two, because I don't think I've ever tested them, then we'll move on to the new edition, and we'll check the rescue dot quickly after that, although I'm not expecting to have to do much here, but we'll see. Let's move to the bench. While we do this, I shall plug a quick ask. This time of the year is the quietest for the channel, so likes count even more than usual on YouTube. So if you enjoy my content and would like to support the channel, I would greatly appreciate if you could give the video a thumbs up. It won't cost you anything, and it will help the channel, if not increase, at least maintain its visibility over the summer. You might even consider subscribing if you haven't already done so, which would also help a great deal. Many thanks in advance. Now, let's return to our patience. Let's start with the oldest one. I think it's a 3153. Yeah. So, I never used this model for the four or five years I've had it. So, let me take it out of its box and I shall get a cloth quickly to avoid scratching anything. There we go. Now, cosmetically, it doesn't look too bad. The chassis looks used, but nothing is out of place. So, we'll start with the customary function test. It's not well properly, but it works. The lights are working too, which is good. One thing that will not come across in video form is the smell, which is a strong smell of old electrics. So I think the motor might be somewhat dirty. So we need to get in there to have a look. For this model, I'm going to try and cover the servicing steps in some detail, as this is something some of you have told me you'd like to see. These steps would also apply to the other models in this video, as most of their components are identical. Let's start by taking the body off. Its screw is located in the center of the chassis, as with most Merklin diesel and electric logos of the era. There we are. This pantograph is annoying me already. I'll deal with it later. But I'll quickly check the pantograph retaining screws are tight while I'm here. They are okay, so I'll put the body out of the way so it doesn't get knocked on the floor by accident. Now, let's look at the chassis. What do we have here? It's a traditional setup. We have a mechanical reverser. Then in the center, a distribution switch with a lever to choose between overhead and track operation. And a good old-fashioned three-pole AC drum collector motor on the other side. And everything is still in its original configuration too. You can see all the black wiring there. Now let's uh, turn the thing on its head and look at the undercarriage. I'll check the traction tires. One is loose, two is loose too, three is still loose, and four is, you'd have guessed it, loose. So we are going to need a full set of new tires. Looking at the front bogey, the uh, wheels look fine, and the pickup shoe is straight and in good shape. So the main event will be the motor bogey by the looks of it. We'll need to lift it out of the chassis, 
the motor bogey is held to the chassis by a clamp which we will need to unscrew. The screw is a bit tight, it might get damaged using the larger screwdriver from the Merklin tool set, so I'll use a bigger screwdriver to avoid damaging it. Cool! Now I'll take the fake bogey off, which is in the way at the moment. That is done by unscrewing the screw behind the coupling. OK! Now with the clamp off we can see some oil deposits, but nothing is congealed, so it's not so bad given the model hasn't seen any action for such a long time. So now we can lift the motor bogey. I want to avoid putting any stress on the wiring as much as possible to preserve the solder joints, especially the ones on the windings. So I'm going to take the bulb contact plate off. There we go. And now the motor bogey can simply be lifted out very gently. And I'll take the bulb off for good measure to protect it and I'll put it in a safe place. Right, uh, it's time to dismantle the motor. So I'll get the brushes out first. I'll start by disengaging the springs. Now we can take the brushes out. Oops, I dropped this one. It's so typical. Okay, for the next one, it's better. I've got better grip. Uh, the brush is quite oily, so the oily trend carries on. Let me try and fish the other brush out. My poor eyesight is not helping here. Never mind. I know where it is, so I'll get it back in a minute once the windings are off. Now, let's take the motor plate screws off. Number one and number two. And I'll take the winding and plate off at the same time. OK, and we have a true oil and graphite feast in there. The inside of the motor plate might not look too bad from here, but it is caked, and the armature is in a bit of a sorry state too. Look at this poor thing. This model has definitely seen quite a bit of action after its last service, assuming it was ever serviced before. So, we've got our work cut out. We'll start with the bogey. Everything still feels free, so that's very good. So I'm going to take all the traction tires off. They all come out very easily. That's bizarre, isn't it? And they can go straight to the bin. That will avoid confusion later on. Now, since the bogey and gears are made out of metal, and nothing is painted. I'll simply use a few squirts of alcohol here and I'll just wipe the old oil and muck off as best as possible with a little cotton bud. And that includes the wheels. And after a couple of minutes, we now have a nice clean bogey to base the rest of our work on. Excellent. Now onto the motor plate. It's an item that is frequently forgotten. So for this I'll use only dry cotton buds. I found that alcohol and other solvents make plastic brittle over time, so I got in the habit of uh, not using anything like that on this part. I could possibly use something else, but this has always worked fine for me. Look at the state of these buds. They're pretty yucky, aren't they? It didn't seem that bad earlier. OK, last cotton buds, and we are ready for the armature. Now we've seen it's quite bad, so I'm going to need a bit of alcohol to help here. So I'll start by cleaning the collector, and I'll also need to take care of the air gaps between the collector segments. Uh, here a gentle scraping with the tip of a pair of tweezers is fine. Look at how much crap is in there. 
This is probably one of the worst amateurs I've ever had to deal with. Okay, we are done. Final wipe. Cool. So I'll turn the armature around and I'll check the teeth on the other side. I'll remove any debris that might have got stuck there. Okay, that's done. I still need to clean the buggy clamp. I'll check the screw area for it on the buggy again, just to make sure. And it looks like our cleaning is now complete. Cool, it's time for some traction tires now. This model uses traction tire type 7153, which is probably the most widely used sized among Merklin locomotives. So I go through a lot of them with all the new additions I get, so I always have a large supply to hand. Here's a little money saving tip if you're in a similar situation. Merklin sells the 7153 in sets of 10 and 50 which come in a bag like this one. See the reference number? It starts with 7153, but it has a .050 suffix. This will not come up when searching for it, or just 7153, on the Merklin website. You'll only find it on the Merklin shop webpage if you search for 7153.050 directly. It is about 40% cheaper than buying the same quantity of tires in bags of 10. So I'll put a link to this somewhere at the top or maybe in the video description. Right, back to the task at hand. I shall fit my tires to the bogey. It's the usual thing here. You insert the tire into its groove on the wheel, then hold it down with a finger. Then you can insert some tweezers or a small screwdriver between the tire and the groove in the wheel and slide it around to guide the tire in its groove. It will naturally fall into place. And after that, I like to make sure the tire is positioned properly, so I place something flat on its surface, here the handle of my tweezers, and I turn the wheel whilst applying very gentle pressure on the tire. This will be enough to straighten anything sticking out, and that will avoid a wobbly ride later on. That's it, all done. Now, lubrication. I'll do the usual tiny drop on the axles near the mouth of their bearing. That's the standard Merklin recommendation. And to reduce gear noise a bit, I do something non-standard, which is to add a minute amount of oil on each gear. Cool. Now, uh, the armature. For this, I'll get a bit of lithium grease and I'll apply a small coating to each armature end. And I drop the armature back in the motor housing. Now I can reassemble the bogey. Winding and motor plate back on. Then the screws. It's important to check that the motor and wheels run freely a couple of times doing this. Uh, if anything sticks, then the fit of the parts need to be checked. Usually, simply refitting them will fix the problem. But you might also have to hunt for a forgotten piece of debris between teeth somewhere on the gears. OK, now it's time to put the brushes back in the motor. I won't change them, I'll just wipe the oil deposits off before reinserting them. Now I can drop the bogey back in the chassis, fit the clamp and the fake bogey. And I'm going to check the other bogey while I'm here. Everything looks fine, but I just want to verify that nothing has accumulated under the pickup shoe. So I'll take it off. It's all fine. It just needs a quick wipe. We'll do a bit of lubrication on the axles. It's the same procedure as on the other side. And I'll put the pickup shoe back on. 
Okay, all that's left is to put the bulb back in and we are ready for a test. Okay, it works. It's a bit noisy, but that should improve with a run-in. So, let's put this thing back together. I'm going to look at our roof now. Uh, we'll start with the annoying pantograph. Uh, we can see on its base there's a bit of a... There's an area where the latch of the pantograph should um, attach to, and it's a bit scuffed. So I'm just going to bend the latch on the pantograph gently to improve the fit. And then I shall tidy the rest of the roof up a bit. The electric lines are made of metal. So I'll just bend them back gently into shape. So that's it, we're all done. Oh, are we? I forgot to check the behavior of the reverser. Let me give the loco full power on the track. Yeah, the electromagnet kicks in immediately. Let's try that again. Same thing. So I'm going to need to get inside again. There we are. So if we look at this reverser, we can see that someone has tried to adjust it in the past. The reverser arm is bent back. It should be at 90 degrees compared to the rest of the part. Now, the behavior of the reverser would indicate that the spring doesn't have enough tension. So, what I'm going to do first is to try and adjust the arm so that it is back to its original position. Then I'm going to try a new spring to see how everything behaves, and I'll take things from there. So, we can push the arm back in position by inserting the tip of a screwdriver and lever the arm back to center. Then we also need to check that the arm is level with the rest of the part. We can bend it back down a bit here. And now that we've got everything in place, I'll attach a new spring and we'll check what is happening. Does it work first? Yep, that works. Now let's give it full power. And we still haven't got enough tension. So I'm going to try and push the arm forward a bit to increase the tension. No change. Okay, I'm going to have to shorten the spring and I shall revert to the original spring for this because I don't need to modify a brand new spring for that. So, so I'll just attach the original spring a couple of loops earlier. I'll just go for the second loop. There we go. Now let's have a look. Let's give it a try. So the reverse is still working. Now let's give it full power. Perfect. It keeps going. Other direction. Same thing. Okay. Well, now we are done. So I'll put things back together. Last minor adjustment to the power line on the roof. And I'm going to put this loco aside for now. I was about to say on to the next victim, but looking at the clock, we have passed the 18 minutes mark already. So I think it's best to stop here for today or the video would be too long. So I'll cover the remaining models in a second episode. I have filmed most of what I need already, so if the editing gods are on my side, you shouldn't have to wait too long for its upload. So that was it for today. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video interesting and helpful. Hopefully enough to give it a thumbs up and maybe hit the subscribe button. Many thanks for staying with me that far and bye for now.